Hey loves, my name is Afani and this is the Afani Be Gentle podcast. On today's episode, we'll be covering a very touchy topic. That topic is co-parenting and baby mama slash baby daddy drama, which I believe actually goes hand in hand. So before you say anything, I have quite a bit of experience with co-parenting as well as baby mama, baby daddy drama, because I am a child of divorced parents. I'm also married to a man that has to co-parent because he has a child from a previous relationship. So I'll start off with my story. I grew up with my mom and dad together. They were married for a few years, but they were together for 15 years. I was accustomed to seeing them together every morning and every night. We did activities together and we often traveled together as well, but they got a divorce. My mother moved on to a new relationship whom she's been with ever since. But before now, I'm not gonna lie, seeing my mom with someone else other than being with my dad for so long, it was just a bit odd to me in the beginning. When my mom moved out and she got her home place, that's when the co-parenting began. That's also when I learned about the do's and don'ts of co-parenting. I truly believe that there are do's and don'ts of co-parenting and oftentimes the younger generations aren't taught how to properly co-parent when a home is broken. So awful co-parenting becomes a generational curse. So before we get into this podcast, I just want to go over a few terms so there isn't any confusion. So pretty much the first term is baby mama. A baby mama is typically described as someone who is on the county, has no education, has multiple baby daddies, no job, and depends on their child support checks or county checks or both to do things like get their hair done, their nails done, party, club, and not take care of their kids the way that they're supposed to. Next is baby daddy. A baby daddy is typically someone who does not take care of their kids or only pays child support or doesn't pay child support and still doesn't take care of their kids, gets multiple people pregnant, doesn't have an education, cares more about hanging out with their homies than spending time with their child or children, does not have legitimate income and is not planning on being a part of their child's life. Then there is a mother, which is typically someone who goes above and beyond for their child, does not depend on other people to help them with their children or their child, works and or goes to school, all while making time for their child and building for their future. A father is typically someone who is hardworking, goes above and beyond for their child or children, focuses on their child's future, and is willing and able to take care of their child by any means necessary. Now, there are some do's and don'ts of co-parenting. So I believe these do's and don'ts of co-parenting are perfect for allowing a child to grow in a healthy environment, whether the parent be together or not. So one do is do encourage a positive relationship between the child and the other parent, as well as the other parent's spouse. A lot of times people think that because you encourage that child or your child to build a relationship with their other parent's spouse, that that is your way of saying, go be a family with them, but forget about me. But that's not it at all. A lot of times we forget that if the child is happy in another home that is not with you, when they're there visiting or they're there to spend time with their other parent, that you should be happy as well because your child feels loved and safe and comfortable. And they should feel the same way with their other parent as they do with you. Don't speak negatively about the other parent to the child or in front of the child. I find many times people, they either believe that their kid is not listening or they just don't care, or they're not paying attention and their child is right there when they're bashing the other parent. And that is a big no-no. Do encourage positive and open communication between all parties involved with the child. That is the mother, the father, the stepmother, and stepfather. Don't put the child against any of the parties involved. And again, that's the mom, dad, stepdad, stepmom. Many people mess up with this part. They always think that, oh, if I put the child against my baby daddy's new girlfriend or fiance or wife, then our child will cause friction between their relationship and ultimately they will break up and then I can wiggle my way back in there. But that is a big no-no as well. Do set boundaries for everyone who has a relationship with a child prior to them meeting the child. 
don't continue to have sex with the other parent after the relationship has ended. And this one is huge because so many people, they may break up, but they're still sleeping with one another. How does that make sense? That makes absolutely no sense. Do be clear about your intentions and feelings with all parties involved. Don't lie about how you feel out of fear of sparing someone's feelings because that can become very tricky as well. I believe these do's and don'ts are important because they force people to be honest with themselves as well as one another, which can cause you to look at the new relationship for what it really is. We are putting the child first and whatever is best for the child is what I'm going to do. Too many people are more focused on how someone hurt them in their relationship that they fail to realize that they are in turn hurting their child by taking it out on the other parent. I always say my parents are very strong, independent minded, respectful people. So when I started to see what comes when emotions overcome relationships and how co-parenting can be affected by this, it changed my perception of them. I learned so much from my own experiences that when I met my sweetheart, I knew that there were some things that I did and did not want to happen prior to meeting my now bonus child. I told my sweetheart that I wanted to meet the mother of his child. He was thoroughly confused, but I did explain to him that I wanted her to know that her child was safe around me. And I also wanted to give her my information that way if her daughter was with me and something happened to him, that I would be able to contact her on their daughter's behalf and vice versa. I knew that was extremely important because I'm a survivor of abuse and now as a mother, I believe it's extremely important that people who are around your child, you know personally and you are able to get in contact with them. Plus, I believe if you're going to be involved with someone who has a child, it is important that the other parent gets to know them and you guys are able to communicate about everything, especially when it involves a child, because this person is going to be helping you raise your child, whether you believe it or not. So the first time I met my sweetheart's baby mama, and you'll understand why I use that phrase, baby mama, instead of mother of his daughter, it was quite an interesting experience. Now, let me rewind a little bit because, again, if you had not listened to my first podcast, you wouldn't know that me and my sweetheart met in college. I was 18, turning 19 years old, and we became really good friends. In fact, we actually became best friends before we dated. I would always ask him about his relationship with his baby mama and how they co-parented. And he would say, we're good. We communicate well. She's in another relationship and she has a baby with him. So it was to my surprise that that is not what I experienced when I met her. Now, prior to meeting her, my sweetheart and I were hanging out in the car before our class started. And I was on my phone reading something when he got a call from his baby mama. She was telling him about their child when I laughed in the background. The first thing she said was, is that bitch laughing at me? Which completely threw me off because why would you assume someone was laughing at you? And... Why are you so bold to say that? Why is that the first thing that came out of your mouth? He said, don't call her a bitch and no one is laughing at you. She then replied, when you pick up my daughter, bring her too. I said, okay, I'll be there. Because one thing that you guys will quickly learn about me in my podcast is that I'm not scary. I am one to face confrontation head on. And I'm also not one to argue with someone. So when my sweetheart told me later that week that he was going to go pick up his daughter and asked if I wanted to come, I said yes. We pulled up to his baby mama's house and he got out of the car and went to the door and she told him that I can come inside. So I got out of the car and I walked up to her and she said, hey, how are you? To my surprise, she was completely different than how she presented herself earlier on the phone that week. Anyway, we went inside and my sweetheart and I sat on one couch and she sat on the opposing couch and we talked. We were there for about 15 minutes and then we picked up his daughter and we left. While I was there, she asked why I wanted to meet her and I explained my reasoning to her and she seemed to understand. I thought the conversation went fine until my sweetheart received a phone call right after we left. It was his baby mama talking shit. (laughs) Looking back, 
I should have known the relationship between the three of us would be off. At the time, I was 19 years old and I was kind of like, I did my part. If bitches want to be weird, bitches want to be weird. If you're from LA, you would know that the phrase bitches are weird or bitches is weird is a very common saying. I'm the type to write people off pretty quickly as a safety measure. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. I typically use it as a self-defense mechanism. Although I wrote her off in my mind, I knew that I would be spending time with her daughter and I would still have to be an adult when dealing with my sweetheart's baby mama. However, it didn't come to a surprise to me when we later had a physical altercation. Now, I'm not going to go into the details about what happened, but it all began with a lie that escalated to physical violence. And although I do promote and believe in positivity and happiness and togetherness, I also believe in defending myself by any means. I never want people to believe that it's okay to put their hands on you or threaten your space because they can't get their way with you. So when I say co-parenting has been quite a journey within being married, it has been quite a journey. It is unfortunate when co-parenting can't just be co-parenting because one or both of the parents are still romantically involved or people have bitter baby mama drama or one or both of the parents just aren't able to put the child first. Although that may not be everyone's experience, it does happen more times than none where the baby daddy is still sleeping with the baby mama or the baby mama is still in love with the baby daddy or there's just some type of tie there that makes it extremely difficult for either or both parties to separate which causes the relationship to go to shit. Especially when one person has moved on and is in a new functional relationship and the other person is not happy in their relationship. So they try to disrespect and degrade your relationship because they're not happy in, and they want you to not be happy as well. Because of course, misery does love company. I have seen co-parenting done completely wrong. Where the child is used as a pawn and one parent suffers because they aren't allowed to be a part of their child's life. Not because they're a shitty parent, but because the other parent is scorned and bitter. And they know the only way to hurt the opposing parent is by turning the child against them. I do believe that putting the child first ensures that the child will never feel as though they're being used as a weapon to hurt the other parent. Things like that can really damage a child and create future resentment towards the person weaponizing their child. Because you do have to remember, the child is not going to be a child forever. One thing I notice that happens a lot in co-parenting relationships, especially when one party has not moved on, is that although they may not want to be with that person anymore, because too many things have happened in the relationship and they just can't forgive and move on, they also don't want their baby mama or baby daddy to be happy. So they do a lot of stupid shit towards the other parent and try to cause friction within the new parent or the other parent's new relationship because they live by the motto, if I'm not happy, you shouldn't be happy either. I hear plenty of stories of baby mamas or baby daddies doing outlandish shit just to get attention from the new spouse so they can cause a problem in the relationship. I believe part of that is to blame on the other parent because they did not set clear boundaries prior to ending their relationship with their child's mother or father. And again, when starting a new relationship with someone else. I have had plenty of friends ask me, what I thought about getting involved with someone who has a child from a previous relationship. I always tell them that if they can avoid it, I would definitely avoid it, especially if they don't have children of their own because they won't understand the dynamic between the baby mama and baby daddy relationship. They would be entering a relationship that was always or will always be trying And a relationship that will always have an extra person involved no matter how you look at it. When dating someone who has children from a previous relationship, you are now a step parent. Especially if this relationship gets serious. The term step parent can be seen as a negative. Especially when the other parent doesn't want you to be a part of their child's life. I am by definition a stepmom. But I do try to treat my bonus child and I do treat my bonus child like I treat my own child 
there's no difference. They both have their own rooms at our home. They both have their own TVs and they're both treated equally when they're around. No child is placed above the other and no child is made to feel less than the other. However, once I saw how my sweetheart's baby mama began turning their daughter against me, I knew the relationship between her and I would never be the same. When I met my bonus child, she was three years old and she was attached to my hip. Everywhere I went, she wanted to go and she loved being around me. It wasn't until her mom realized that their daughter loved me that she started to turn her against me. She started to teach her daughter to lie on me and lied to her dad about me because in her mind, if we break up her and my dad, then my mom and my dad will get back together. However, the only way a child would form that opinion, especially that young, is if someone instilled that into them. I never held it against her, especially when she was younger. However, those kinds of teachings and brainwashing, because it is brainwashing, on a child can cause permanent scars on relationships. And that's why baby mamas or baby daddies believe that if they can turn the child against the step parent, then they typically won't have to worry about anything because the relationship won't survive. Although that's not always the case. It happens quite often. It's so frustrating dealing with someone who has malice towards you because they want to be with someone that you're with. You could be the greatest person in the world, but because they're blinded by their own malicious intent, they can't see that. In my situation, I had so much to offer my bonus child and I still do but because of her mother's ways and lack of maturity she wasn't able to experience it to its full extent which brings me back to people not putting their child and their interest ahead of their own the child suffers for it which she truly has it isn't until all parties involved in the child's life come together and put their differences aside and respect one another for the child's sake that the child actually benefits and thrives. So to wrap up this episode, co-parenting is not as difficult as people make it seem. Once we understand that co-parenting is not for ourselves, but it's for the betterment of our child, then we will realize that no matter how much hurt we've experienced in a relationship, we will never allow our child to see our hurt play out in the way we communicate with the other parent. We must also understand that the do's and don'ts of co-parenting truly should be a universal law that allows you to better assist your child in navigating a household where both parents aren't physically present every day in the same household. Once these basic rules are followed, co-parenting will become much easier. And yes, sometimes it's easier said said than done because feelings are involved. But again, you have to remember that your child comes first and you have to put your feelings to the side for the betterment of your child. So that's all for this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support I've received thus far. I can't wait for you guys to hear the next episode. Again, my name is Ifani and you were listening to the Ifani Be Gentle podcast. I'll see you guys in my next episode. Bye.